Hi, and welcome to my playhouse and to the data center. I got a request in one of the comments of one of my videos. I, uh, I forget which one, but well, uh, the request was to go over how you configure the disk drives in a blade center and it's the blade that's called HS22 and um, I don't remember the guy's name but he had a home blade sender and if you have a IBM home blade sender I, I think he had an S I have an H but it's the same thing well if you have a home blade sender you need all the help you can get so I thought we should try and um, and do this today and um, let's just start with what a blade sender is and what it looks like and stuff like that it's been plenty time since I've missed with this last but this is a blade center and it's a big uh, center which contains a room for up to 14 blades and each of these blades are an individual servers server with um, well it's fully occupied with two CPUs and a whole bunch of RAM and a little bit of cards inside you can put additional network cards and I believe you can also put a RAID controller in them I don't think I have any but as you can see they they kind of stick out and uh, well you can you can take them out and you can do stuff with them I have most of mine out because that way I can play with the blade sensor with just one blade or two blades or whatever and uh, each of them, if they're just sitting in there and, um, and not doing anything, they still use some power to be ready to do something. So I have them disconnected. Um, so the HS22 is this one, those two. I also believe it's this one. So um, they're just gonna try and turn one of them on and, uh, and mess with one of those. The blade center on the back of it, it has fans and it has I.O. and all that good stuff. If you're really interested, I have done plenty of videos on the uh, blade center H here and videos on each blade server. So uh, yeah, today we're just going to check if we can configure the drives. But let's just take the first one here and push that in. So, so when I turn the blade sensor on, that blade server will be connected. I hope. I think. I think I got it in far enough. So, yeah. So ages ago, I connected my blade sensor to this iBoot bar here, which is an uh, it's a remote control switch, kind of power switch. You have uh, eight connections that you can turn on and off on it. Uh, and I believe the only thing that I have on here is the blade sensor. And I did a video on this. This was um, kindly donated to me by MMV Block. Mm, I forget. So that is still connected and I have it on my phone. And I believe the password or the, the code was admin. Oh, it remembers that. Okay. <laughs> Change password. No, not that. Okay. So we should be able to just turn on everything. Select all. Duke. Turn on. Duke. Yep. And the light blinks. It's a lovely hot summer day, so why don't we turn on a blade sensor in the data center? I should put something in here. Hmm. I'm just gonna pop in another blade so that... So that it doesn't suck air through there. Okay, so... um. I have cheated. I have been around the back and connected it to the monitor here. Uh, the blade center itself don't show up on the monitor, but as soon as we turn a blade server on, it does show up as if it was an ordinary server. 
right now the monitor is telling me that there is no signal whatsoever so uh, yeah we're just gonna give it two minutes to uh, to think things over and then we're gonna turn on the first server so we have climbed down uh, below the keyboard and <laughs> it's up here it's a uh, very badly uh, put when I have to mess with the with the plate sensor I can see that the first one is complaining well and then it stopped okay I can see that the first one just stopped complaining <laughs> I would have guessed that the battery was bad in it and um, blinking means that it's powered but it's not powered on and the same thing with this one this is the one that we're gonna be messing with and it has two hard drives uh, SAS drive, oh, now it's mad again, two SAS drives and they're on 73 gigabytes each, so they're just small, uh, let's call them test drives, nowadays 73 gigabytes isn't much, but to turn on the server, we press the power on button, which is located in here, and I powered that, then we have, we have the ability to connect the monitor and also the CD-ROM drive, we're not going to need that, but there are two other buttons here that uh, tells the, the plate sensor which server we should connect to, uh, to the screen uh, and which one has the CD-ROM drive and USB ports as such. Uh, the top one is the screen, the bottom one is the USB slash CD-ROM drive. So we're just going to connect the screen to it there. So now that is blinking and telling us that now the monitor is connected to that server. And getting up here, we see that that is correct. So the server is um, connecting to stuff and figuring stuff out. I haven't messed with this in ages, so I should probably do a lot of firmware upgrading and stuff. and. We are just going to be messing around with the with the storage today, so let's try and see if we can do that. So right now it should uh, we should get something about storage, I guess something where we can press Control C or maybe no, it's just going to start. There's a hypervisor on there, so that's not how you do it. Let's. Um, is it too late to press Control or Delete? No, we can do that. There we are back at where we started. And at some point we'll get different options here. There will be F1 for the BIOS. Uh, I think it was F8 for Diagnostics or F9, I forget. And then there was F12 for uh, selecting different boot options. F1. I'm gonna go into the bias here. I need to replace the battery on the camera. So this is pretty much a normal bias for an IBM server. Everything is as as it usually is. And if we go into system settings here, we have we have the pro let's check what processes in here. Do we get any good info? Uh, not really. Okay. It, it probably brags about that somewhere else. So let's not bother with that. Let's go directly to adapters and EFI drivers. There. And here we have the LSI uh, SAS driver thinky de bob, which is in there, which is used to configure the drives. We also have the network, a Broadcom network gigabit card and another one and that is all that the Wi-Fi bias sees. So let's um, go to this one. This is our LSI logical MPT setup utility. Probably way outdated but it sees our controller which is a SAS 1064E and um, that's the only thing we can kind of uh, select here. So we can go in and it's a blade server. There isn't really room for a lot of controllers here. So I think maybe it could have had one more, but yeah, let's go in here. It's gonna read some data and it's gonna tell us that this and that and like this. 
and here we can see rate properties, some SaaS and some advanced adapter properties. But what we really want to mess with is the rate property there. And in here we see our two drives, the two IBM drives here. And we get a little bit of the same information up here. Uh, we get a bit of information, but what we really want to do is to manage our array. And I don't know if I should do anything with this array because it's kind of working perfectly well. But I could delete it right there. I can activate, manage. Well, as I'm doing a video on configuring the drives, I think we better delete the array and try and create it again. So, uh, delete array. Are you sure? Warning, all data is going to be lost. Yeah, it, it, it holds some um, some VMware data. As I haven't been using this Blade Center for a long time, I'm pretty sure that there is nothing useful on there. So, we're going to select yes. And it's processing. It's said that it was going to take a minute. It was way faster than that. I uh, didn't have to paddle very long. So now, uh, great properties. And now uh, we get different options. So now we can create uh, IM volume, create IME volume. Create it. So we need three to eight drives to do that. We only have two in there. I don't know why that option is there. The two real options is the top one where we can create a mirror of our two drives and the bottom one is the striped where the two drives will become one drive with the combined amount of storage on them. Um, oh. oh, it blinks every time I select something new. That's, that's irritating. So we, we came from a mirror and we're probably going to go back to a mirror, but yeah, let's just create that. And here we uh, can select what drives do we want to put in there and it helps us down here. So select drive for array. Do we have to press plus? So we can create the array and it can keep the data that is on there. That's interesting. I'll try that. I will select the other one as well. There. And then C for creating array. Uh, create and save the new array. So let's save the changes and exit the menu. And it's uh, creating the array. And it says that it's going to take a minute. Okay. Let's see if it sees our array. It does. It's, it's there. It's uh, synchronizing. And it's not gotten very far. So I'm going to let it work on that for a little bit. Okay. It has completed. And it, um, I'm very curious if it has uh, contained the data that was on there. And it will be very easy to check that because we can just boot it and if it boots up in uh, VMware ESXi, it should be good to go. So let's exit here and exit again, and exit again. Uh, it's weird that we can't do that. Apparently it has saved them already. And it returned us to the BIOS, which we also need to exit. Yes. So let's see if it boots on the drive again. Hmm. It does not look like it. Seems like it does not have anything to boot from now. I'm gonna try and make a control and delete and let it try again. Okay, maybe I was just too eager. Maybe it, it would have found this, but well, right now it's checking the ray controller. Back to listed. Checking the HPA. And we found. Okay, it, 
it doesn't have a boot drive now. So let's uh, let's boot it on ESXi 6.7. I'll put the USB key in over here. And then we'll go over here and select that this server has the media bay which includes the USB key. Yeah, it tells us that it has nothing to boot from. And it's, it's probably not going to check the USB key before we do a reboot. Okay, so we are booting again. And now we can select F12 to select the boot device. And we have some USB storage. So here we would have been able to go in and configure it as well and it sees we have one drive configured and it sees our USB key and it's booting ESXi uh, loading the installation at least I guess the CPUs are too old. So, okay, we're not going to do that then. So we're going to power off the, the blade sensor again. First I'm just going to power off this blade. There, that's powered off. And then I need the phone. So we're going to select all. And we're going to power off. So yeah, that was easy enough. So that is how I would configure a couple of drives in the Blade Center, IBM Blade Center H with the HS22 Blade, which is an IBM Blade. Um, each of them has a generation the, and they, they correspond with the generation of CPUs that goes in that Blade. So yeah, um, it's been a while since I've had this Blade Center up and running, so it was kind of fun to, to uh, to play with it again and especially now that I can just turn it on with my phone and turn it off again when I'm done with it uh, I did have to go around the back and connect the monitor and the keyboard to it but back in the days I did have a KVM switch for that sort of jobs but it was a lot of extra cables and I have found it to be easier to just move the monitor and the keyboard mouse USB connection I could go and uh, connect to it from the computer in the living room and I could do the same thing but uh, yeah now we did it this way. This worked perfectly well except the ESXi version was uh, generation too new for this server CPU. I could cheat and do that little ninja fix and fix that but uh, I did that in another video so uh, yeah please uh, give this video a like we did do something that worked we deleted an array and created it again and that works so please like that so uh, thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye